have a question for you. When was the last time you experienced something truly wonderful? Something that evoked in you a sense of wonder, a sense of awe, amazement, a, a moment. When was that for you? Maybe it was a recent sunset that you happened to catch. You were maybe driving along or looking out the window at just the right moment to see the brilliant colors. Or maybe it was a newborn baby. Maybe your baby or someone you know whose baby was just born and you look at that precious creation in awe and wonder, the magic, the beauty, the awe of new life. Maybe it was like the moment I had when I looked out the window the other day and saw deer out in the field. Just thought about what an amazing thing to have animals in the wild. As a matter of fact, I had an awe-inspiring, a wonderful experience just yesterday. Just yesterday, we had a chance to go over to Higgins Point and see eagles and, well, the worship team, thank you for all you've done. They're going to come back and join us here in just a few moments as we wrap up our time together, but I had an experience just yesterday, just a spontaneous, hey, let's go check out the eagles. I hear they're there in record numbers. And so we went over to Higgins Point, and uh, there were hundreds of people there. The traffic was heavy, lots of people parking everywhere with cameras and cell phones out, taking pictures of the eagles. And I grabbed a few shots myself with my cell phone, and I was just amazed. I was like a little kid in a candy store. I mean, it was wide-eyed, and it's like I've never had an opportunity to see so many bald eagles in their natural habitat, sometimes swooping in right in our direction and swerving at the last minute to go take their perch on a tree, diving down to feed on the fish in the lake. It was just an amazing experience. And everybody there was there because of the sense of wonder. Everyone was experiencing that kind of wonder. It was amazing. Nature's full of all kinds of examples of the brilliance of God's creative genius. I'm a, a fan of the... Um, BBC programs, Planet Earth, Blue Planet, and a variety of others where they, they just have come up with some amazing footage. Like, how did they ever get that? Like, where did the camera have to be and how long did it have to be there to capture that moment? Sometimes in a remote part of one of the poles, sometimes in a remote part of the Amazon jungle, sometimes under the sea or in the air. It's just, to me, amazing. And as I see those things and have those moments, I'm filled with a sense of wonder. Well, the song that we often hear this time of year says this, says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Everybody sing it with me now, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> but the song says that, says it's the most wonderful time of the year. But is it? The reality is for some of us, sometimes it's the most stressful time of the year or it's the most emotional time of the year. You see, I don't think it's about a time of the year. It's not about a time of the year that is the most wonderful. It's about a way to live life with a sense of wonder. If I could just impart one thing to you today. If, if you walk away from here and someone asks you, well, so what did he talk about? You tell them this, that I encourage you to live life with a sense of wonder. Let God do something in you to help restore that sense of wonder if it's lost on you. Let God do something fresh in you that makes real a sense of wonder with respect to the world around you. Let God do something fresh in you that makes for you to have a fresh sense of wonder with regard to the people in your life. To see them in a way that's different than perhaps you've been seeing them. See, God's involvement, if you let God do something in your heart, if you let God help you with this, God's involvement adds a quality of wonder to even the messiest of lives. You, you say, well, yeah, with sense of wonder, that sounds great, it's awesome, perfect, great, awesome, not so much. 
Like, like maybe you're thinking there's just so much going on in my life. It's like, I just don't know if that's even possible for me. But I would suggest to you that it is possible, that God wants to add a sense of wonder. Let, let, me, let me explain it this way or illustrate it this way. The other day, I was bemoaning the fact that the days are so short. I go through this every year. Yesterday was not only a great day because I got to see bald eagles in their natural habitat, but it was also the shortest day of the year. Do you know what has happened today? The day got longer. And tomorrow a little longer, and every day after that a little longer, right? And I can, I can be all like having a bad attitude about that, that it gets dark so early. It's like, what that's a, what's that about? Like, why is that? A, yeah, I wish I lived down south someplace. You know, I could have that kind of thing going on and miss the few minutes when the sun goes down, like I did yesterday on that beautiful day. As it was disappearing behind the encroaching clouds and the colors, it's like there's a few minutes of wonder, but I could be caught up in my bad attitude about the short days and, and miss a wonder-filled moment happening in the sky right there if I just take time and look up and take it in. And that's how it is in our individual lives, in our personal lives. God, God's involvement adds a quality of wonder to, to even the most convoluted set of circumstances and the most mixed up, tangled up sense of emotion and, and circumstances in our lives. You see, God chooses to insert himself into the middle of the mess in our lives. We, we sometimes think about God and, and what he wants to do in our lives in some sort of detached or sanitized kind of way, but God's not, that's not how he operates. God sees life as it really is and inserts himself into it and inserts a sense of wonder right into the middle of the mess that is sometimes in our lives. The historical account of that first Christmas is a great example. It's definitely not like a Hallmark movie. But his birth was the most wonder full birth ever. See, what was really going on, if you read the accounts in Scripture of what was taking place in the world at that time, it, it's, it's really not a Hallmark movie at all. There's a sex scandal. Like, how does she get pregnant? There's political oppression. You will go and be counted. There's traveling hardships. No room in the inn. And there's attempted murder, an actual murder as a result of the birth of Christ because of the evil in the heart of King Herod. It's not a Hallmark movie, but God injects himself into that set of circumstances in the most wonderful way and causes his son, our Savior, to be born in the midst of that mess. And if we see the mess and miss the wonder, we've missed the hand of God and the work of God and the purpose of God in that moment. A sense of wonder was certainly what they felt when they were the shepherds out in the field that night. And that's the account that we want to take a quick look at in Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8. It says this, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Verse 9 says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I'm sure they were. Next verse says, but the angel said to them, don't be afraid. What's happening right now is a wonderful moment. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And verse 11 tells us what they said. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And they went on to say, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now, you can imagine the shepherds standing there taking this all in and, and being just amazed that this angel is saying these things to them and they're having this moment. But then it gets even more amazing, more awe-inspiring, more wonder-filled. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, like very loudly, right? Verse 15, saying, saying, Glory to God in the highest. Come on, everybody. Are you with me on this? Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Like there's a big to-do over this. They're talking with an angel with just one individual, and then there's everybody shows up, and the party begins. The celebration begins. Next verse. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Did you see that? The shepherds said to one another, are you kidding me? 
the shepherds said to one another, like, what the heck just happened, right? They, they said to one another, what? What did they say? They said, let us go. Let's check it out. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. In other words, this is an amazing thing we've just been told. This is a wonder thing. This is a, a moment of wonder that we've just experienced and now we want to go check out what they've encouraged us to go check out. And that's exactly what they did. Now that, that's a big moment. That's a dramatic moment. But I would just remind you that it doesn't have to be a dramatic moment for there to be a sense of wonder in our hearts. It doesn't have to be something big, something amazing like that. It can be something small and just as amazing, like the look on my granddaughter's faces this morning when they got up and went to the window and saw snow on the deck. Their faces were filled with wonder, with amazement. And they started rattling the doorknob because they wanted to go out and eat some snow, that's what they said. <laughs> Just a simple thing like snow, but it's so easy to miss. How often things that are awe-inspiring and wonder-evoking in us, how often they escape us or go unnoticed or just get taken for granted. We happen to have a very nice view out the windows of our house, and I remember when we first moved in 11 years ago, I thought, why would I ever leave here? Because that view is so awe-inspiring. And now I have to say, most of the time I take it for granted. I remember the first time I saw a chipmunk in our yard tiny little thing with his beautiful markings and so cute and flitting around and doing his thing and then pretty soon there were two of them and then there were three of them and now we have five or six of them that as far as we can tell and they must spend the winter in our rock wall and they come out every spring and I kind of just take them for granted but I remember the first time I saw them I was just like how amazing is that look at that I'm like God made that I remember the first time I saw the northern lights a long time ago, but it was the first time I'd seen them because I just recently moved to the Northwest and I was teaching a Bible study on Whidbey Island and we walked out of the Bible study. It had been light when we went in and we walked out. It was dark and I looked up and I was wide-eyed with amazement. I'd never seen anything like that. It was just so breathtaking. Live life with a sense of wonder. But I'll tell you the most wonderful thing, the thing that evokes in me the most powerful sense of awe and amazement is when I see God work in a person's life. When I see a changed heart. When I see someone following Jesus. When I see someone living their life in a different way, relating to God in a different way than they had previously. Some of those sentiments were captured in that song that we just got through listening to. Going down into the water of baptism, coming back up, leaving a life behind and embracing a new one and seeing the evidence of God's actual, powerful, life-transforming work in the heart of an individual is a, an awe-inspiring, wonder-invoking thing for me personally. I don't know about you, but as amazing as creation is, as amazing as, as the things around us in this world are, as amazing as those moments are that give us a chance to have a glimpse into to the wonder of life itself, I realize that there are also a lot of other things in life. Even nature itself has earthquakes and tsunamis and hurricanes and other things. And life can present all kinds of challenges to us. And there is a lot of brokenness and hurt and pain in our world. But if God helps us, we can see him in the midst of all that's going on in our world. And hopefully not miss the opportunities to live life with a sense of wonder. But for that to happen, it takes God at work in our hearts, doesn't it? It takes God working and helping us with our perspective so we don't become jaded and cynical, so that we can retain some of that childlike awe and amazement at life itself. And for that to happen, we have to have a relationship with him, a relationship that is what Jesus coming to earth was all about. He came so that we could have that relationship. He came and lived his life and died on the cross so that we could have a personal relationship with him. And here's what John says about his coming, Jesus' birth. It says in John chapter 1, but to all who believed him and accepted him, not just as a child, but as the man, God himself in human flesh, as the one 
who died on the cross as the Savior, but all who believed him and accepted him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. If you're one of our guests here today and are not particularly clear on how this works, let me just clarify and say that we're all children of God by creation. We're part of the human race and, and uh, talk about a sense of wonder. We certainly have that in just who we are as human beings and how our bodies are made in this wonderful world we live in. God has created us for a purpose. We're all his children by creation. But the Bible is also very clear we're not all his children by relationship with him. That's something we have to choose. And that's what the birth of Christ is about. And that's the wonderful privilege and opportunity we have each and every one of us to say yes to him, to accept him, to believe in him and accept him, and then receive from God this most wonder-inspiring, marvelous privilege of becoming children of God, part of his forever family. And it's not complicated how that works, to receive him or to accept him. Jesus described it for us this way in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. He said, if you'll, I'm, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking, and if you'll hear my voice, if you'll recognize that it's me calling your name, knocking on the door of your heart, and the door of your life, if you'll hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. I'll come into your life, but I'm not going to push my way in. And for all of us, that's how it works. There's an initial time of inviting him into our lives, and then there's a lifestyle as we walk with him of allowing him to have the the influence on our hearts, the influence on our thoughts, and the influence on our decisions that he wants us to have. And he won't do any of that by force. He'll do that only at our invitation. What a wonderful privilege our Creator has given us to say yes to him in that way. And I want to invite you, if you've never done that, never just intentionally and consciously, deliberately, with, with a sense of what you're doing and, and doing it on purpose, I want to invite you to say yes to him in a way. It's not the only way, but it's a way that was my experience. When I first gave my heart to Christ, someone said, hey, if you're ready to say yes to him, if you're ready to open up your heart, if you want him in your life, then repeat this simple prayer phrase by phrase after me. And I did, and my relationship with him began that day. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Many in this room have already done that, but I would encourage and invite you to join them if you haven't, to just say yes and invite Christ into your heart right now. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your son Jesus, whose birthday we celebrate today.